welcome to episode 160 of Both Down, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. That's tired of dealing with the internet's crap. Yeah, we're two old men. I'm Steve. No, I'm Scott. <laughs> so old we've got our names. God. <laughs> and with me is Steve. We're two old guys who just <laughs> griped for about 15 minutes about how people gripe on the internet. So we're just like them. Yep. Except we're griping on our podcast. <laughs> Just like other old white men. I mean, it is what it is, man. <laughs> we need to get start turning right wing and start smoking weed and complaining about taxes. I think we did complain about taxes. <laughs> we did. In, in our rant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's sad. Probably, pro- probably not going to get us going right wing. So. No, definitely not. I still haven't smoked uh, any weed. Like, it's legal here. I thought you used to. I only did that a few times with an ex because she was into it. Okay. But yeah, it's never really been my thing. It's it like be Steve, Weedhead, Campbell. Weedawoggy. Weedabaki, yeah, you could be. It's not a bad name. No, I'm good. So, how you been? Um, life is okay. <laughs> is it starting I, I to really even like... out at the like? It's not peaking super bad. It's just kind of what's peak. that? Things are not you know peaking super bad now. They're just kind of leveling off at the annoying level. Um, I, I really don't like people. We know this asking me how it's going (laughs) (laughs) because I feel like I don't want to be the person who lies. And yet I also don't want to be the person (laughs) who spills my guts and brings other people down. (laughs) Um, teen, just teenagers are very difficult. Yes. Yeah. And between me and jennifer we have four of them um and um let's just say that like the oldest parker who usually gives us the most problems or at times did um is probably you know if there's a bcs of children he's probably number one most of the time as like the best child bowl championship series yeah people who don't know what that is okay yeah, yeah. College football score. I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. So, like, <laughs> the kids that <laughs> they just struggling getting them to school, getting them focused or even partially focused on school, or they do the work, but don't turn it in. <laughs> God, that's, that's. And then you talk to their stupid. teacher to give them, like, an extension. And then they don't turn it in. So then their grades are bad because we didn't turn it in. And it makes no logical sense. Yeah. And I really try not to come out on something that's <laughs> going to be forever on the internet and gripe about my children. But here if, we are. If they've like, made it, it through 170 or 80 episodes that we have of the show. That's true. And I mean, they somehow listen to this. this. Yeah. It's not that you don't no, love them. Just, They're just idiots. To be fair, they've grown up in a different time than we did. Yeah. And um, not to sound even further old, but like, I'm very glad I didn't have all this social media crap to worry about or do something stupid and four people record it so they can post it forever somewhere. Yeah. Now they do, they are better than us in some ways, but man, right now it's just like, I don't understand why they make their life more difficult when just turn your work in and just go to school i tell my children this lately a lot and they're sick of it well i tell them two things do what you need to do so you can do what you want to do Mm -hmm. so go to school do your work and don't give me an excuse to tell them no meaning my friends are important Hanging out with friends is important to me. You know this. I never want to tell my children, can't hang out with your friends today because you didn't do this or that because I know how important it is to have people to lean on through the rest of your life because 
family's family. I yeah. mean, then some people's families are terrible, but friends, you get to choose who you hang out with. And, um, you know, I had to pull some of that from my children and they think I was just being a jerk. And it's like, no, they, just do what you need to do so you can do what you want to do. And don't give me a reason to say no. Don't piss me off. We get the hand again. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, don't ask me stuff about like my personal life. <laughs> me and Jennifer are doing wonderful. There you go. Um, she got a new car. She's got a new practice. Yeah. <laughs> we'll so move on to of, other stuff then. <laughs> there's a lot of new things going on that potentially will... It's just in, in the early stages. She has a, her new practice is going super well right now. She has a waiting list, if that tells you anything. That's great. Uh, uh, so, yeah, her counseling, her own counseling business is going wonderful. It's just uh, the insurance companies to pay her oh. has been... So, like, in a, in a month or so, all this should be super, you know, by the end of the year, she should be in, like, where she, she knows, like, all her tax things and yeah. what she's paying and not paying. And she should be a lot happier. So as well, but right now it's a little stressful. <clears throat> That's life. But, <laughs> but I mean, if you're going to create your own business, it is going to be that way. Right. Yeah. So, and me, I'm just like every other American going like, yes, I got a tiny raise. Oh, my mortgage <laughs> is going up, but why? Because it can. Did so you get a raise? Just, uh, Oh, uh, through our contract, we always, one's like in there every year or something like that. So. What percentage do you know? No, I don't. So I, I got, I could, I could, I could tell you what I'm making off the, uh, off the podcast. Oh no, that's I fine. Know, I was just like, I, I got a raise at my job cause they do that every year, which is awesome. It was only three and a half percent, which is acceptable. Basically cost of living. That's fine. But it got me thinking like, I've never gotten a raise before. Like an actual regular raise. I've only gotten pay raises from changing positions and such before. So Really? Yeah. Wow. Like I was with Medicare Recovery for 10 years, and the only time I got a pay raise there was when they had an outside contractor come in and tell them they're paying us too little. Wow. So I don't count well, that. Congr congratulations. I, ha I, I have been uh, over-selected, I guess. I've been really frustrated with work because there's been positions throughout the FAA opening up. Yeah. And I've applied for them on different contracts and stuff. And <laughs> like some of the jobs will say must have a college degree and the person they hire doesn't have a college degree. <laughs> God. Well, don't you have or, a college degree though? Or I might work with that male or female, and I know how they work. And oh, it's like yeah. people, it really feels sometimes like the world, like people fall up. Mm -hmm. I always say that people fall up, like they go, "We don't want to deal with this person anymore. Let them hire them away." Yeah, there's a lot to that. But I had oh. a coworker at the Medicare job where she couldn't even fill out her own time card. She had to get people to help her every week. Same time card. Not that big of a deal. She got promoted to supervisor. And I had to go Appreciate into it. my supervisor. I went to my boss's boss's office and was like, what the hell's going on? Well, what do you mean? She should not have that position. Well, I mean, blah, 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 blah. No, she got hired because, you know, she's buddies with so-and-so who's also a manager. But that's uh, not the I way it works, Steve. That's 100% the way it works. And they didn't like that. I mean, some of this might be that, and I'm trying not to, I'm really not trying to poo-poo other co-workers improving. It's just, I don't, me and another guy, there's a couple of us actually, who just don't understand why we didn't even get interviews. Yeah. Even though, like, we work at the same current job. <laughs> Anyways, that's how life works, right? You yeah. know, so sometimes it just doesn't work out. Or, it does work out, you just got to run the race a little longer and then you go, Oh, thank God I didn't get that job or whatever <laughs> it is. Yep. So well, Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl then. Yes. Um, uh, thank you for coming to counseling one on one with <laughs> almost turning fifty. What life is like. 
Oh shit! You do tune Triffy this year, don't you? I uh, yeah, I'm I'm like I'm I was a little thinking bit less than a month away. I was thinking you're turning forty nine. Uh, I kind of wish. Yeah. Well, you could lie. I mean, I could lie, but it doesn't matter, right? Right. I'm if, almost halfway through life, Steve. You're older than so many old people that you saw on TV and movies when you were younger. I know. And it's like, do I look like Wilford Brimley did when he was no. 45? <laughs> do you look older than all the Golden Girls? No. <laughs> I know. Isn't that, that is funny, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's all makeup and clothing and styles and stuff. But And also, I think not nearly as many people smoke now. And we're a lot more relaxed. So I think that helps. And we're not out in the sun as much. I mean, all those things could be true. Yeah. But yeah, 50. 50. You should have like a... Should what? You should have mentioned that when we planned Oklahoma. We could have had that right around your birthday. Like we normally do. Don't, don't even start this with me. I never wanted to move to Oklahoma to begin. I know you didn't, but I had a reason I wanted to move it, and I did. You I know could have, you did. You could have mentioned that is your 50th. I didn't think about it. Too late now, but... No, it's okay. Everybody can bring me a 50th birthday gift. Cash would be wonderful since these teenagers are trying to go to... Did I tell you the band is trying to take the teenagers also to... For a senior trip to Disney, yeah, you mentioned that, and now and now I have the youngest going up to high school, so yeah, it's just fun. that's where you tell them, you know what, we're not that level of rich, so you don't get to go. <laughs> well, I mean, you have a job. Why don't you start saving that money from your job or taking extra shifts? We'll do a different hmm. job. You know, ah, uh, Steve, <laughs> it's real easy if you don't care. I know. It's really difficult if you do care. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because in like 10 years, they're all going to be saying like, dad messed me up because he never he did anything me for school. me. He yeah. wanted me to turn in my, my work after I did it. <laughs> how dare, how dare he? Hey, right, so aside from you turning 50 Oklahoma <clears throat> Bowl coming up, uh, anything Blood Bowl related? Yeah, we actually started. I'll do my best to talk about Blood Bowl for the rest of the way here. People who's on this life journey with me, you too one day will turn 50. <laughs> if you haven't you already. Will, your kids will grow up and they'll be buttholes as they're teenagers. I'm told they grow out of it. We hope so. Um, <clears throat> we started our league on um, for the store. Like store league, like. You know, in my brain, there's still home leagues and store leagues. Anyways, there's a, we started our uh, league, the uh, Central Oklahoma Blood Bowl League uh, season. I believe this is 11. No, season 10. And um, so last season, we ended our season at Wizards in around July. And then another local store wanted to start a league. And so they, they did. You know, they even reached out with my blessing and said, you would it bother you if we started a league and did the similar format? I said, sure, go ahead. So they ran a league from like uh, August to December. And then, you know, we always start our league mid January. So we went ahead and started our league. Some of those players that played back to back seasons with no break aren't coming back. So there's either one of two things going on. They got burnt out for playing a lot of blood bowl. Or they just like the other league better. And either way is perfectly fine. We have some players that have played in both. And yeah. um, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything, you know, good or bad either way. Like this one's better, that one's better, nothing like that. It's just been like, yeah, Blood Bowl's fun and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's cool to have an option to play it year round. So all that said, uh, we went from like 24 teams or 22, something like that. I can't remember. Uh, we had a bunch of teams last year and this year we're sitting at 12 players but we just got another couple just this uh month as people watched and observed so it's still you know like 14 13 14 players yeah which is still really good you know back in 
back not too long ago before uh the new blood bowl came out uh whatever 2020 blood bowl came out we had like if you remember one time we had like six people or five people in the league one season yeah i don't know if you remember that but (laughs) we did and we just rolled with it and did the best we could and so yeah we got we got like uh currently 12 then we got a few more just join up they walked came met us and hung out a little bit and they're like yeah this is definitely for me and i still have a few potential people that claim they're going to join maybe in you know maybe march april so we'll see how that goes um i took goblins because i promised i'd play goblins to myself and nobody else if nurgle went all the way and undefeated and they did (laughs) So here I am with goblins. I'm trying to run a goblin team without secret weapons on my main roster. See, that's just, I mean, if you're going to play goblins, you got to play the secret weapons. That's the fun part of it. That's what people tell me, but the fun part is winning. So, uh, overrated. So I've been trying to just roster like 12 to 13 goblins and then induce the secret weapons along with bribes. Yeah, and when I do that, do that only maybe take one. So my first game, I played Gary's uh, Dark Elves. I beat them two to nothing. <laughs> Fungus the loon. <laughs> Thought Gary was done with Blood Bowl, <clears throat> or just Gutter Bowl. I think it's well, Gutter Bowl is godly. That's another story whatsoever. Okay. Uh, so anyways, I Fungus the loon was amazing in that game. It. Made me want to take him all the time. He was like the knockout king. He wasn't injuring people as like casualties, but man, he was knocking out people left and right. Hmm. Uh, won that game two to nothing. The next game I played, I believe, oh, I, I played a guy named, uh, goes by Joby Stewart. He's just started playing tournaments and the Blood Bowl for about nine months, maybe. Um, he played in the other league that was at the other store as well. He he took Black Orcs this season, which to me is not an easy team for a fairly beginner player. Yeah. I told him that, but you know some people don't want to listen to advice. They want to play what they want to play, and I get that. So um, I played him. First half, I was aces, man. Aces. Everything I did, nothing I could do would go wrong. I was up one to nothing at halftime. The second half for six plays, nothing Joby could do was wrong. It was tied one to one. Joby was really happy because like he was like being new. He's like, I haven't won a game yet, or won or tied a game yet. I've lost I've lost every game. So I was like, okay, I just I was like, probably a tie, but I do have one reroll and uh, I can throw the goblin. Yep. And I think he was misunderstood on a few rules if i was either the time like i think he maybe only thought we had one play or something like that anyways uh we had two i had two plays he had one play and i ended up scoring on a perfect throw with a goblin which i didn't realize was uh star player points as well yeah now yeah and um i ended up pulling that game out two to one (laughs) Uh, um my opponent was not happy and I wouldn't have been either. I mean, like, you know, I get it. it. If he felt like kind of like he won the game by controlling the whole second half and then the throw worked out well, that's um, what happens sometimes against those teams. And so I was in first place after two games in the league <laughs> and I was really happy. Um, and then I played the wood elf team in our league and, um, the guy was like, let's try to have a five to five game. I'd be happy with that because he wants to earn extra money <laughs> okay. with Wood Elves. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I doubt that happens. Well, we ended up tying four to four. Jeez. Uh, I had one goblin score four touchdowns. God. Two of them were on throws. So right now my troll is three for three on <laughs> goblin throws and lands. <laughs> Gonna level him up just by throwing. Uh, well, he doesn't. He only gets a star player point if it's a perfect pass. Yeah. The six. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but I did get enough star player points in those three games with that one goblin where I could roll for like a strength boost or something like that. <laughs> and I went, I rolled it and I didn't get it. I got like movement or armor and I, I went ahead and just took the blocks. So now I have a blodging goblin. Why would you and not I've take induced, movement? 
Nah, because I want to protect him. Okay. I. It's probably more efficient. Somebody else out there is already screaming at the podcast saying, <laughs> I'm not building goblins right. But yes, I don't have any weapons. I have two trolls, nothing but goblins. But just I've based played, on, I've, he was the scoring guy. He's the one you throw. You got to give him the extra movement. He earned it. Hmm. I want to like protect him if okay. I ever run the ball. So. Wuss. <laughs> I, I am a wuss, that's for sure. <laughs> And I'm sure I'll never lay the goblin for the rest of the season because of <laughs> all of this. Crap. God, that's pretty crazy. If he would have got edge, I probably would have took edge though. Edge or strength, I probably would have took. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. The strength, the strength actually is probably a waste of money, but yeah. because of the fluffy side of me, I, I would have took it. You know? I would have. I mean, I'd take it. I mean, it's a big difference going from two to three. So. Yeah, but it's like a lot. It's 80. a lot. Of money. Yeah, it's eighty k. It's ridiculous. It's like a, like having three goblins, but um, so far so good. The concentrating on just one induced weapon and then using your bribes for that is yeah. really good. And I think I'm gonna buy a Uligan. Eventually, I'm gonna buy one secret weapon to just house on the team. I haven't done that yet though. So, well, that's cool. I've had like three or four goblins die though, so that's really sad. Oh, I had a Gary kill last season. With the Nurgle, Gary killed a bloater like on one of the very last plays of the game. Yeah. This year when I played Gary that first game, he killed the troll on one of the last plays of the game. Well, you do that to him, so, he's going to complain though. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've lost a big piece most seasons, but I recovered. I mean, I had a lot of money and I bought a lot of fans to begin with and winning helps. So That's good. So, yeah, I'm, like, in third place right now in the league. Like, we're all kind of tied. Third for... place with two wins and a tie is a lot of good people. What's that? I said third place with two wins and a tie would be a lot of good people. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy. I, if I can, you know, I'm, I'm not going to keep up this, but yeah, I'm going to do what I can, right? <laughs> so... So yeah, that's the Blood Bowl stuff. Um, Up here, I, um, there's a North Denver League, which is on hold for some reason. Not sure. Um, which I'm more north of Denver than that league, so it's not really great for me. Um, but then a store, pretty much the closest game store to us here, decided they wanted to run a league. Uh, so they have ran a couple of nights of Blood Bowl, you know, get together, talk to people. Told mm-hmm. them I'd cover tour plays cost for the first season just to have them use that. So I'm not dealing with whatever other BS they're using. Um, still 30 minutes away, which sucks. Like that's the closest place. But we'll see. Hasn't started yet. So hopefully that'll go well. I have no idea what I'll play. My options are... Goblin, Snotlings. I guess I have a crap ton of options if I want to use one of the teams I bought, but they're not greatly painted. So, well, Don't you live with a Blood Bowl guy who has everything? Yes. Well, I don't know if he has. Probably yes. But I don't like borrowing teams. I like to use my own. You're a weirdo. Yeah. I mean, so. I get that, but like, you could get one until I ship you a team up there or something. Oh, I know. Oh. Well, I'll be down there in April anyways, so. Are you driving this time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to fly, but with the, the idea was I was going to fly in and out of DFW just so that I can see Greg and Marla and then see the eclipse on the way back. But all the flights coming back from Dallas were booked or super expensive. So I was like, yeah, I'll just drive. That way I can drop some stuff off into storage if the stuff here I don't want and um, pick up some stuff and whatever. I got time. Right. Cool. Yeah, you should grab you a couple of teams that you yeah might might play at least and stuff like that. And I got all these comic books for you. So. Yep, that was another reason. That's cool. Um, I think that's it, Blood Bowl-wise. No, no any rumors? No rumors of anything? 
No. People were asking me at work. They don't believe me now when I say I don't know anything. And they're like, right. And they like wink their eyes at me. Like, no, we no. haven't heard anything. We're not going to. Like, uh, GW released a picture of a goose that had a flight helmet on. And everyone was like, it's an old school Blood Bowl helmet. It's going to be a Blood Bowl related figure. Like, it, no Blood Bowl team wears that type of hat. That's not an old leather hat. That's like a aviator's hat. But See, you, you knew stuff more than I did, so that's good. I don't know what it is. And uh, they did, on Super Bowl weekend, they did a couple of segments of Blood Bowl on Warhammer Plus, which is the mm-hmm. YouTube channel, but you have to subscribe okay. to it. Okay. They, they did like a match report and then a, a paint session? I don't know. But I don't have it, so... If GW's listening, if you'd like to give us a free copy of that service, since I don't have any reason to get it, because aside from that, I don't know that you've ever done anything Blood Bowl related. Hmm. But that's pretty much it. I got you. All right, well, are you ready to talk about some Blood Bowl for everybody here? Sure. Did we discuss which order we're doing, or is it just going to be random and see what happens? You pick. Okay. You pick. We shall be talking about um, giveaways for tournaments for the first segment. Then we'll talk about Scott's adventures in Texas. And then we'll talk about what the best spin-off game of Blood Bowl is. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay. We shall be back shortly. Both Down is brought to you by Wizards Asylum in Norman, Oklahoma, and BigDealSwag.com. If you're in Norman, Oklahoma, check out Wizards Asylum for all your board game needs. If you're looking for tournament swag, go to BigDealSwag.com. Well, we are back, and we might as well continue the discussion of complaining about gamers and their greed into this segment. Talking Reed. about so we're this time we're going to be talking about how hard it is as a tournament organizer anymore to give away interesting stuff. Hold on, before everybody thinks that we were talking about blood bowlers with greed. Oh no, I was talking. I was talking about card gamers <laughs> between segments and how they will throw a match just to get more packs and stuff like that because that, that's all they care about. Yeah, and the concept uh, of the rich get richer. Because we've seen tournaments where first place gets like first choice of the prizes available, or you know they get money or something. We're vehemently against that. We don't like that. We want it to be a whole separate thing. Like the tournament, you're playing for the trophy and for the recognition, and then any raffles and stuff is all secondary. Right. So I don't want the blood bowlers to think because, for real, the blood bowl community is overall one of the better communities i've ever seen in gaming yeah and i'm sure there's other ones too that i just don't participate in for all i know the kill team community and stuff like that's really good too so we were talking about card gamers and new (laughs) cards and how people get really greedy when new card games come out yeah so with that said we're not talking about you guys but it is super difficult now to come up with items that might be unique or desirable because there's so many tournaments now and everybody has everything. <laughs> everybody has everything. Everybody can print off like figures, right? We're doing a figure this year. It's the first one we've done in a while, but it's from Pedro Ramos. That's a special type of figure, right? This is not just, you know, we got someone unnamed to design a figure. This is Pedro Ramos, who does some of the best Blood Bowl figures out there, and it's a premium. So, you know, we went out of our way to get the best, and we did. We're also giving away, you know, the weather token from Charlie Victor. Again, a very premium item, because Charlie Victor does some amazing stuff. You know, you can look at uh, the tokens they're doing from Zorpy Bowl, or for other places it's amazing stuff 
But we're pretty much having to go to this level to have stuff that is worthy of what we want to provide at our tournaments. Obviously, we're always going to do dice, because any tournament should always have custom dice, right? I mean... I guess they don't have yes, to, but... It, it feels cool. I, anymore, I can't even say, like, they are very cool. I just don't know what to do with them, because I never use them afterwards. Well, display, really. That's I mean, the, it, that's the it main is, thing. Is, to me, more, it's it's like a, a little... It's like keeping a concert ticket stub or exactly. something like that. Yeah. Um, some people do that. I used to have friends who would keep every movie stub they went to. Um, but yes, that that's what it's like. And I think they're, they're fun. And I like the idea of passing out, quote, neutral dice mm -hmm. <laughs> for everybody and you participate in the tournament. So yeah, I am on board on the custom dice. It's afterwards. I don't know what to do. And I've even thought about like, recently with the the stuff with all the band fees and stuff like that i really thought about taking like all these dice i have accumulated over the years and i know there's like super dice collectors and just like selling them as a bundle um but i don't know if i would offend people who gave me really cool dice or you know i mean I know. so for me i like having yeah. all the dice for tournaments i've gone to obviously for and sure. the dice and that I, we and made, I agree with you. You know, I I love getting dice at the tournaments. I um, do. and you know, I have at home two Oberweiss uh, containers or milk jugs, glass milk jugs, and then Full I have the huh? Full of dice. Yes, one is dice that were given to me or for that I bought that are special, and then the other ones are events and ones that we made. Events we went to, ones we made. Um, I didn't have that here, so Phil Bonarek, nice enough to get one for me and send it to me, so now I, I have another one here. But I, I do like that, because at least I can have them on display and they look cool. But yeah, dice, a given. Pretty much any tournament is going to be giving those away. Pretty much always enjoyed. Custom block dice? Questionable. There have been some amazing nice ones. And there have been some that I'm like, I don't ever want to use those. Those are horrible. Yeah, and I mean, those are cool, but at the same time, they're one, they're super expensive to make, yes, or at least they, they were. Yeah. I, I'm assuming they still are. Pretty much. And um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm a weird person in the fact that like, I personally only want to use block dice that's been made by GW. Yeah, or NAF. Or or it came from the NAF, right? Yeah. I mean, those I feel like, I don't know why, I've tried, I have some old first edition hand-painted fumble dice, probably that I would sell at this point if somebody's out there is needing them. You can um, get quite a bit for those. Oh, could I? I oh, yeah. yeah. Then I'm kind of, uh, I, I, I built a cell right now. You, okay. you caught me at a good point. We will um, discuss anyways, afterwards. <laughs> I've tried using those. I've tried using, um, I think it was Jonas that gave us some with the little target. Yeah, the moose for, tracks like, the and moose stuff. Thing. Mm -hmm. I've used those. I think they look cool. Yeah. I've used the both down block dice. And you think I would at least <laughs> like to use our own both down block dice since I did the iconography on it. I think it. they're awesome. And yet, I don't use them. I default to the GW ones mm -hmm. all the time. And any more to get usage out of the all the block dice because you know they have two different flavors for every race, pretty much. I now like I'm playing goblins, so I went and I got you know one set of like block dice or whatever, and then one set of the regular dice to use in my games, so I can quote use them since I paid for them, mm -hmm. which which I'm probably devaluing them by taking the sticker off the little container because some people collect them with all the little stickers. You'll you know? go back on. Well, not if you throw it away. Not <laughs> but, so much uh, then. Yeah, I have I have since like put it back on in a different position so it'll stay on there. But yeah, yeah. So even I don't use the both down block dice, and I should like all the time. That's the best way to promote it. I use our NAF dice. I mean, I use the the first NAF dice, the black ones. Just to flex. I, 
Plus, I like, like the, the contrast. Uh, plus, I filled in the gold with white, so they're just black with white, so they're very identifiable. I don't have right. to struggle to read them. Yes, and I, I won't use, even if I've tried, it's like, I can't really read this so well, this this yeah. weird gold and green or whatever. So I so try to get something I can also see clearly. That was an issue yeah. with, at World Cup, too, because World Cup, there were different colors of dice, and... I didn't like the ones that were provided, so I went and ha I bought other sets and kept trying to find ones that I could read easier. But then my opponents would use the other ones, and sometimes you just have to take their word for it. Like, yeah, I can't tell what that is. I'm not going to, you know, get up and stand up and pick them up and look at them every single time. So I just have to go with what they say. So, Correct. I mean, and then tokens, like... We've done bottle caps, we've done wood tokens, we've done chits for tokens. Again, all fine, but once you get done with that event, never use them again. I I still like the the bottle caps are special, and at the same time, I have a ton of bottle caps that if somebody told me, I collect all these little things, I'd probably sell them in a heartbeat. Even, <laughs> even the ones we made for our personal league. Yeah, you know? um, yeah we did. Those um, are, are those still cheap? Are those fairly probably, cheap? Probably, yeah. I really should make some for all our league people. That would be that would well, be cool. Just to hand out as like mm -hmm. fun things, but, uh, but we did that once for our old league that you know that we didn't run in the store. Remember that one yeah. season we made a whole bunch of bottle caps for yeah your inevitable and, inevitable city rampage. Remember those and it, uh, the Bell Rev Swamp Dogs. Yeah, and I had the Gregor Shockers. They mm -hmm. also had some. Yeah, we made a whole bunch of those for the people in the league, and they really enjoyed them. So from that angle, it's it would be really cool. And if I could encourage everybody to get a logo, maybe maybe I'll do something like that. That would be neat. I don't know. Um, but then again, like for tournaments, right? So what is there to do that hasn't been done? Because prints of posters, done. Um Dice bags, done. Um, miniatures of all sorts have been done. Tokens have been done. Reroll markers have been done. Weather dice, I guess, have been done. We're doing a weather token, which I think is a first, and I really like that, so that's going to be awesome. I, I agree with you, and I think it looks awesome. I can't wait to see the final product. and then. But another part of me, though, is like, Will I carry this to an event and use it? I, and I don't know. And that's just well, see, being for that one really fair. I don't have anything else to denote weather. And when you forget it, it really sucks. And I've for done sure. that more than once. So I'll be happy to take that along with me just so I can be like, okay, I know what weather it is. I know something we haven't done in a I've seen it the little the tradition to me seems to be shifting in Blood Bowl that we don't put the little ring ball anymore on, on players. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to use like a token underneath. Yeah. Or the little, you know what I'm talking about? The thing that fits in, like yeah. the ball is here. We'll probably do that next and year, I think. I personally do not like those at all. Not my thing. I have, I have learned to adapt to it. Because I would say 70% of the people really like those a yeah. lot. And it's just not my deal. Um, we are much <laughs> more um, naturalist, I guess, is a way of saying it. Like, we like our pitches to look old? like an actual... Well, no. <laughs> yes, but no. Um, we like our stuff to look like it's really a Blood Bowl game. So our pitches tend not to have random BS on it that you wouldn't normally see. You know, even like our sweet spots are, you know, usually uh, built into the fluff of the pitch. You know, we will use balls on a ring that someone carries versus, you know, underneath them because that's what it would look like, even though it still kind of look fake. That's more of our thing. A lot of people just don't care. You know, I think the token, the one that you'd like fit the miniature in, yeah, and it has the indention so it can fit on the pitch with other round bases, is a very whoever came up with that first mm -hmm. 
I think it's really amazing, actually. It's a great idea. It's just, I also don't think the, and this is just being an old man, I guess now, as I approach 50, I, the, the set of balls that has like the very thin ring around it, and I think we got those from Tom, mm-hmm. the thinner ring ones, his like first batch. I love those. They have the little split at the end, so yeah. you can like push it onto a little arm or whatever. And I don't have many of those left, and I don't even know if he makes those little thin ones anymore. Don't think but so. Those are my favorite ones of all the little ball tokens. You can paint them. You don't have to paint them. Matter of fact, they actually look to me almost better without paint because mm-hmm. they really stand out on the pitch. It's a the big white. It's the white ball. Um, so yeah, I agree with you. I don't know. Yeah, probably at some point we probably should make a ball token because we don't have one. We yeah. don't have a both them ball token like that at all. Um, I mean, some events like do the, coins like just regular two sided coins like Chaos Cup does every year. We did that one for. Oklahoma Bowl five, I think. I I enjoy the token or the the coins. It looks awesome. Don't but do I don't anything know what to with them. Do with them in there, and I'll and those I'll never sell. I, yeah, I, I won't. Just won't. I mean that when I die, somebody can come over here and get it for a grilled cheese sandwich and three bucks for my daughters, and they can take all those coins because I think those look amazingly cool. I want to use them to do flip offs flips for kickoffs and yet i don't want to damage figures so yes. so yeah all that is true i i am a fan of the coins that aren't like stickers the the really nice produced ones mm-hmm. um is there so, any um any more the one go ahead you do yours i think we were the first person to come up with the the uh d3 and yeah. coin flipper dice. Yeah, or kickoff me, die. That's 100% yeah, ours. Or kickoff. Um, I, I really like that. I do and love I, those. I wouldn't be, a, I mean, I, if somebody else came out with one and we go to a tournament and go, I'd go probably, oh, Steve, they stole our idea. <laughs> and at the same time, that is an item I use all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. Um, me and you personally have more colors than like the other people because we did a dice test run. Remember that yeah. when you ran some different colors and stuff? And it's one of my favorite items to use. Mm-hmm. Um, Same here. And I do think there's a place for... We will probably be getting no... more of those made. It's just a matter of want to get Oklahoma done first and then catch up with Jack and yeah, get that's, some stuff done. Yeah, six custom size, size dice are yeah. also more pricey. But... You were talking about the different tokens, the wood tokens, mm-hmm. the bottle caps and stuff like that. Some of those come around and I really like how they look and feel. And there's some right now I'm using that's clear like orange. Do you know where we got those from? Clear I want to say it's orange. Are they both down logo? No, they're not the both. Oh, I love those too. That one guy who made those mm-hmm. way back when. No, these other ones are clear and orange, and the iconography is just very simple, but so readable from across the table for my opponent. They know exactly, like, this is my score. I, Might have been Joe I, or Brendan, because I know they did some tokens. I want to say it's one of the Smiths up there who yeah. had those in one of their products, and I filled them in with white. They're very clear. I, I use those quite often now. Mm-hmm. So usually if I carry it around, that means I really enjoy the product itself so yeah i use either those or i actually have a a crap ton of the reroll markers from the nef back when they did the metal ones Mm -hmm. so i tend to use those no those are nice too and if i pull them all out i'd probably use those as well um so my question was going to be is there it used to be like when we went to our first tournament the model giveaway was one of the main reasons we went is there anything that someone could give away at a tournament that makes you want to go to that tournament more than not? Hmm. Like, I cannot I... think of anything. Like, the, I mean, we have seen small tournaments of six to eight people give away a whole team, a whole fully customized 3D printed team. Just because the guy running it or his buddy was a 3D modeler and they had a 3D printer, 
Here you go. Everybody gets a team. That's ridiculous. How do we even compete with that? Well, I mean, I personally, this is <laughs> this is how I feel to, to tournament people out there. Don't break your bank. Don't lose a bunch of money. <laughs> For too I think every tournament what? should break even. At least break even. That is my personal thoughts. Is is that hopefully, when somebody runs a tournament, whether there's ten people there or forty people there, you at least break even, and that includes like buying the people who help you with lunch. You know, buy them lunch. They were here all day. At least you can do is buy them lunch. Now I know not everybody agrees with me on this, and some people go. This is my way of giving back to the community. I don't mind spending an extra two hundred dollars to buy a team and have somebody paint the team. It's not a big well, deal. We are at that's perfectly. We're almost to thirty five. We're, we're like thirty four people at Fort Oklahoma Bowl. For us to break even based on future production costs, we need another thirty people to sign up. So, if you have well, not signed up to Oklahoma Bowl weekend, please do so because. Well, and also, if but you're listening, we are very privileged. Is, so, this is because Steve overspins. Yep, I would say it's probably safe to say that in some cases that I could see Jim Luff probably oh, overspending. For sure. Yeah, and I know other places have overspent. I would personally not. <laughs> so here's the thing, um, though: we are very privileged that we have this podcast. And my devotion to not being broke, I guess, and being on the internet all the time. Because we'll have extra pieces that I'll sell, like extra wall drummers from Pedro Ramos. We'll have extra dice. We'll have extra you know, weather tokens. Through the podcast and through Big Deal Swag, I can sell those and make back any losses I make from the tournament. I'm perfectly fine with that. So it's more of an upfront cost. That's part of why I did Big Deal Swag, too. So that other people, like, you know, I just got a whole bunch of the 3 die block stuff in. You know, they had a ton of their dice. And remember the tokens they did back mm -hmm. a long time ago? They still had some of those left. So I can put yes. them on BigDealSwag.com and sell them. And then they can recoup some of those funds that they put out for those older tournaments. So, if anyone has stuff sitting out there, let me help you with that. I but guess I didn't answer your question. We is are lucky there. there. Anything, is there anything that gets me to go to the tournament? Uh, probably, probably not at this point. Probably not at this point. I mean, at first, the, the main hook to going all the way to Chaos Cup, and I mentioned it probably a hundred times on here, is, oh, I get a Chaos All-Star Mini. Yeah, I mentioned that, yeah. And if I lived in the... Where is Adepticon Chicago? Yeah. I know Super for Bowl. a while they were doing Super Bowl like characters. Mm -hmm. All the Chicago the, Bears. All the Chicago Bears. And if I'd lived in that area, I'd probably have, especially 15 years ago, I'd have been all over that. I mean, Again. now there's a lot more Blood Bowl stuff out there. So yeah. you can customize whatever you want. Again, but. shout out to Phil Bonarek for hooking me up throughout the years with all that stuff. Well, see, there you go. You you have those as well. Um, so, no, at this point, we're blessed that there's so many tournaments. So everything feels kind of like a carbon copy, which is gr great in a lot of ways. Because you talk to other gamers and you say, like, oh, so it's this much. And then you hand them dice. And they're like, oh, especially the first timers. You yeah. get dice? And it's like, yeah, most Blood Bowl tournaments do that. And they're like, they light up. They're mm -hmm. like really cool because... They paid the same fees for like a, a magic tournament and stuff like that. So, oh, did I? I talked a little bit about the bison series I'm doing, right? I believe so. So, doing the five events in the northern states here, but like each tournament, I'm charging twenty bucks and I'm getting custom dice. So, you know, it's a little bit of money, um, but at least half the prize, at least half the entry fee is going to go to buying stuff from those stores for letting me have them there because I, they don't know me from Adam. Like, I'm just running something there and they're being nice enough. So, you know, I'm going to buy stuff there and then do a raffle to whoever shows up. But, yeah, I'm going to lose a lot of money there on gas and hotels. And But, again, this is part of my enjoyment. I get to travel and do stuff. 
But I mean, I, th- I was trying to think. At... Like I was trying to think of something interesting that would be inexpensive to have for these tournaments. And I, I really started thinking like dice is enough for a, a low price. I I just need to provide dice. And I'm going to do certificates for the trophies. So no real trophies, just be a certificate, which is, again, fine. Because I don't know how many people we're going to get in North Dakota. At least one. Thank you, Sean. But hopefully enough to justify it and everything will be fine. But I'm trying to mitigate my costs. But I'm, I'm still trying to think of something, just something kind of unique to do. And I just don't know. It's great to say that it's hard to find something unique because that means there's been so many Blood Bowl events ran lately that it's just hard. And that's okay. And, you know, I said to the young people, I'm going to sound like a super old guy. Everybody has a 3D printer now. Mm -hmm. So when you go somewhere, they hand you a 3D model and they all look pretty good. It's just like, do I, can I fit it into a team or not? Now, I'm blessed that we run tournaments. And so if I do get unique items from a special tournament, if it's something I don't want, I can you know pass it on to somebody else who didn't get to go. Yeah. You know, somebody who's playing their tournament for the first time and they didn't know that you know they're, they're playing a goblin team or something. And, oh, wow, where'd you get this cool chainsaw miniature? Oh, I got that cool chainsaw miniature at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre tournament. Mm-hmm. I already had one from previous years. I kept the old model instead of this model. And they're like, this one's really freaking cool. I can't believe it was in the giveaways. And I'm like, that makes me happy. That makes me happy. So, And I don't want to be a, a, a pooper on this again. I've been very vocal about it. But like the giveaway for the figure at World Cup, where it was a Minotaur that had absolutely nothing to do with Spain, was just very much a letdown. Like there's, I don't even know what the World Cup team really was because it wasn't Spain related, and that annoyed me. I can I can understand that because people at the World Cup in previous years have done a really good job. Yeah, the Luca team, where is the Italian Renaissance Undead, amazing team, freaking amazing. I need to get them painted still, but I have so many of those skeleton models because I love them so much, and then. Well. Uh, Maybe this World Cup team decided not to take a loss on some stuff. So they're just <laughs> running in the bulls. Let's just do a Minotaur and let's just move on. Because, yeah. And again, it's hard to come up with something, spend a lot of money on it, when maybe at this point, if everybody's like us, mm-hmm. and I'm sure Phil is like somebody like Phil who listens all the time is like us. We love getting swag. Yeah. And at the same time, we kind of have all the swag too. Like it's not. It that was another thing. It's like how much do we actually use? Not much. <laughs> I would like to use it all. Yeah. And at one point in my life, I thought <laughs> ten years ago, I was like, oh, I can use this on this. <laughs> it's it's hard now. It's hard now, and as hard as it is, I I try to get it in hands of people that could use some stuff, even if they're local guys. You know, somebody who's not as blessed as me and doesn't have as many Blood Bowl teams, but they need a new. Like a model for their team or this oh, or yeah, that. It's like, hey, sure. could you use this as this? And they're like, yeah, I'd use that as my coach model. Why don't you just take that? Well, how about I buy you something? Um, how about you just give me a Coke? Yeah, okay. exactly. You know, whatever it is. Because we're just lucky. <laughs> we're very, very lucky. Um, I am glad that, <laughs> you know, the other side is, is that instead of these cool giveaways, tournaments can be based and be cash tournaments. And I'm telling people right now i'm never playing blood bowl i'm never playing dragon ball super yeah or any other games i enjoy playing on a tournament level for money i just it changes how people act even if it's ten dollars mm-hmm. or fifteen dollars or twenty dollars so well, it was like that one tournament in ohio i went to i got second place and i think i paid 10 to play and i ended up winning 20 so i got my money back and got 10 bucks but there was no custom dice. There was no trophies or anything. Um, I think first place might have got a trophy, but it's just cash. So I I used that cash specifically to buy a, an accessory pack for GI Joe, so that from now on until I develop Alzheimer's or something or forget, 
I have a quote-unquote trophy from that tournament, even though it's not an actual Blood Bowl trophy. Right, and while I know you like that item... I do love that item. You, <laughs> you would have bought it either way. Yeah, um, I'd much rather have a trophy. You yeah, you would, even if it was a certificate mm-hmm. that 100%. said second, second place and you got a custom two dice or just the certificate. Yeah. I know it sounds stupid. You would have been more happy with that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I I don't think if somebody out there is listening, what the whole segment is, is to stir up some like <laughs> thoughts. Give us ideas. Maybe there's some, yeah. <laughs> maybe there's a unique item that is in Montana or Pennsylvania or upper New York. Or in Florida that we haven't thought of yet, and somebody else has, because it is getting harder and harder to come up with, quote, unique ideas. Yeah. And now that st- we've done this weather token, I don't I don't know where we go from here. <laughs> I don't either. It's like, and I keep looking at bottle openers, and I'm like, well, yeah, but we don't really drink. So, uh, you know, I looked at Jones, uh, you know, Jones Soda? Uh-huh. So you can do custom runs of Jones Soda with, like, custom labels. I was like, that would be really cool. Just do, like, some custom root beer for the weekend or something. Hell no. It was, like, 80 bucks for, a, you know, what, a 24-pack or something? Something oh, wow. stupid. It was stupid expensive. So I that mean, we even did happening. the... We even did the beer one year. Where yeah, we that was made, like I made beer labels. Oklahoma three or something because of Jeffro. Yeah, Jeff those Rowe were amazing. Brewed the beer, we <laughs> we brewed the beer, shipped the beer, labeled the beer, and some people love the beer, and some God. people are just not beer drinkers. And I, uh, I still have the empty bottles. That is a cool memento be, because it was our thing. But is it feasible to do it all the time? I no. So if someone makes custom root beer and wants to bottle it let me know i'm all for it one thing i do use and i know we're ranting way too this site's already gone way longer than i thought it would go um that's why it's a good and this segment. is a me thing because <laughs> because i board game a lot with other people coasters i do like the coasters but i use okay fair. Any, anytime i get a coaster for blood bowl or another game, I put it in the pile of my little things, and when people come over and game and they have a drink, they yeah. put grab one of those. And some people go, "Oh, that's cool. Where'd you get this? What tournament is this from? Or, you know, what game is this from? Or whatever." Um, and sometimes those coasters that are dual sided that have like it have a both down logo on one side and then a scatter template on the other, mm-hmm. you know, those could be multiple use type deals. So I use them not yeah. really for gaming. <laughs> But I use it to set the drinks on while I'm gaming. I mean, that's acceptable. It's also slam mats and dice cups. I mean, but tournaments have done those too. Yeah. Dice cups for everybody is expensive. Are they for the lemon Remember, I looked. I like the ones that we got at Chaos Cup this year. I, I love those. Yeah, Jack so. does great. Um, Are those, those from Jack? Mm-hmm. Well, then if it was me personally, I would vote for a both down Jack. Well, I mean, Jack. <laughs> they might be coming anyways. Oh, well, we'll okay. see. Oh. Um, I, I remember I looked. Our tournament. Remember when we did I those per- chits? I forgot about the miniature until you just mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> remember those chits we did for like Oklahoma 6 or something? Yes. I looked at doing a dice tower at that time. This is before we knew Pete. Because I'm like, this same website that I got him off had like, you could print off uh, images onto dice towers that you would they would laser cut out and you put them together. I'm like, that would be kind of neat. And it wasn't stupid expensive, and they collapsed. But I'm like, eh, that's still too much. More than ten bucks a person is hard to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah. well, again, yes. If you have any ideas, I know we're floundering, but. We want to do cool stuff, and it just gets harder and harder every time. But this year is really cool, so awesome dice, awesome miniature, awesome token, and then whatever else we decide to come up with. Yep. 
I take it you're sorry, done. Re- okay. <laughs> oh, no, I was reading something. I'm sorry. Something came across my screen. I'm sorry. You're fine. <laughs> no, uh, I, I really don't have anything. If, if you ask me if I have anything else to say about this, at this point, I, I really don't. It's just, it is really hard. This year was a real struggle. Yeah. And I was not really for the weather things. And they turned out really, at least what we've seen so far, they've turned out really good. We don't have them in hand yet. No, they should be amazing, I'm, though. I'm excited, actually, to see them now. I was not. <laughs> I was against you getting these done, just because I knew they'd be kind of costly. They are very costly. But, but, but I think the product is going to be, like, an amazing product. And the people doing that always make a good product anyways. Yeah. It's it wasn't really a question on them. It was really it wasn't worth our time and stuff. And no, I get that. But so. yeah, it's, I I've been wanting to do something with Charlie Victor for a while, and this gave us a good excuse. So yeah, hey, no problem. We shall Charlie be back. Charlie Victor makes good products yes. for sure. Yes, they do. So. Uh, we'll be back to talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre three. All right. And we're back, and we're going to talk about. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. And by well, we, I think it, you mean you. Because I, I didn't mean go. me. I think this is 3. Yeah. Let's see. In 2022, there was Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Actually, they don't. he doesn't give numbers really to these things. Oh, it okay. looks like. At least not on the NAF. So this is just Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2023. So... Well, that was 2020. This was 2024. Okay. So I think this one is the fourth one. From what I can tell. Because I didn't go to the very, very first one. And then the second one got canceled and pushed back because of COVID stuff. From what I understand of the history of this tournament. So he just called this Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2020, comma, two. Didn't you go to the first one? Uh, not that I know of. Unless not, this is the very first one. You you tell me. I went to 2022, 2023, 2024. I don't know. Never mind. I think there was one before that in the history of Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Okay. <clears throat> if Jason Campbell's here, he could tell us the history. But this is my third Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I took... Uh, undead the very first year with an so this tournament is is you get an allotment of stuff to build your team you have to take one chainsaw on one of your line well you can put it on anybody you if you wanted to put it on your war dancer or, or mummy or whatever but it goes on one of your positionals and then you can buy additional chainsaws for 50k to put on another position okay. so therefore some people could have like five chainsaws uh, Drew Bucciacone took, um, I believe, Stotlings, and I think he had five or six chainsaws to this event. And they all come with secret weapon? They all come with secret weapon. So everything in this tournament, tiebreakers look at chainsaw casualties first, even if you casualtied yourself. So into if we look into tw- uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2023, um, he usually it caps at like 24 people. So in that event, there was two undefeateds. It came down to who casualtied the most with their chainsaw. And I happened to casualty myself twice <laughs> with a chainsaw. And I won. I was the champion in 2023 with my Amazon team. And here we are again. I took, <laughs> I took what else? So I, I keep taking these lo- semi low armor teams uh, in these last couple Seems of years. Seems a bad idea. Pull- it does seem like a bad idea. You would you would think that, and yet I just tried to make sure I have lots of players. And this year I only had like um, three casualties. I think it's hold on, is that right? Yeah, only three casualties against me the whole time. Wow. Okay. So I that's very fortunate, right? Yeah. Um, I believe there was only twenty or twenty-two people at this event. There was a few people who didn't come. Anyways, he had a few extra spots if needed. Uh, we raised, man, I can't remember the total, but there was a lot of money raised. Uh, see if I can scroll around here to see if I could find out in this donations. Uh, 
over I uh, see more important one thousand one hundred and twenty dollars uh donated to the uh cult basically colon cancer alliance or whatever whatever this word is that I cannot pronounce col colorectal colorectal yes that word colorectal cancer alliance so that's quite a bit of money Dustin <clears throat> you could say it's an ass load of money but I'm bump yes uh, Dustin painted a really cool vampire team uh, Drew bought a ton of tickets so I was really happy when Drew won the actual vampire team so Good. he has a he has a badass vampire team for this event there was I believe there was two people undefeated in this tournament as well at the end and so then it came down to Texas Chainsaw Casualties. Um, first place was uh, Adam. Um, he had a uh, Norse. He won. He has won the tournament. Adam K. I forget how to pronounce his last name, but you've seen him. You know who I'm talking about. He he won the event with Norse this time. This is the second time he's won a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So before I believe he did it with Black Works, and then Colin Murphy came in second with his Vampires. Um, beyond that, there was a bunch of people tied for with two wins and one one loss, and I, I was amongst that group. But tiebreakers went to <laughs> chainsaw casualties, so therefore I was the worst out of that bunch of people because I don't <laughs> think I had any. I only had two casualties for the whole tournament, so that's not great, man. Not not great. Uh, I never really have great casualties at this event i just try to take a lot of people and survive um so the event was i can't remember the game shop that it was at technically it was the same one that's been at every every year yeah it's mainly a miniature shop that sells like also some magic cards and stuff it was um it's a nice venue it's clean venue my problem with the venue is I want to spend money to support the venue and I don't buy magic cards. I don't buy Pokemon cards and the few, like I was going to buy like some GW models to go with my speed freaks, uh, box set. So like some orc vehicles and stuff like this, they were out of the vehicles I needed. So they do carry some board games, but it's like six different board games. And like most of them already have. So, I found myself really struggling to support the store to buy some stuff. So I ended up buying a few packs of like magic or something like that. And, you know, didn't turn them in for credit at my store because I don't really need them, but I wish there was a board game there. I wish there was some models there or, you know, just something that I could support the store. Cause that's just a me thing. I like to support the store, especially on an event like this, where there's so much donations going towards like, you know, a charity event. Yeah, I'm with you. I always like to support the store, and it it's even harder for me because I don't play games, you know? So I'm looking right. like, what's a weird random item I could buy? Was it Y2K Comics? No. No. It's a different place. That's No, it's, it's not Y2K. I, I could probably look this up here Evolution? Just a little bit, but Evolution. That's okay. it. Okay. Evolution. Um, anyways, me and Jennifer and met up with drew we stayed the night uh stayed the weekend with drew down there in texas and then me and drew that next morning drove over to evolution uh the event didn't start till i believe it was 12 or 12 30 something like that so we already had breakfast we drove over there we stopped at a comic store i cannot remember the comic store's name uh but it's a really nice comic shop and me and drew looked around got some goodies was it y2k uh, <laughs> no, no, I want to say it's called Generation X. Maybe. Oh, okay. And you can you can Google that if you want. It's on the way down there. I think it's Generation X Comics. Um, anyways, it's a nice shop. It's actually a shop that I'd like to go down to Texas for the weekend, stay with Drew, and just go over there with like four hours to look around for like back issues and stuff. But I found some cool Nithman comics. Uh, remember the old Nithman series? Oh yeah, okay. Written, written by Larry Hama. Mm-hmm. I recently picked up those just to kind of reread them. I read a few as a kid, but now I've read the whole series and it's pretty different. It's weird Um, going back and reading old comics and I see ads for other series that I knew existed at the time, 
but I never got into. And then I look at them now and I'm like, huh, I bet that was an interesting comic. Right. And it's like, oh, I should probably go back and read those. I'm like, no. See, no, that, not. that place, I, well, I found some stuff to buy. I only bought half the stuff I wanted <laughs> and because I was saving my cash for the other store. Yeah. And then when I got to the store, there wasn't much to buy. Um, we we bailed as soon as uh, after they did the, the raffles because Jennifer was waiting at Drew's house all day because she didn't go with us um, doing some of her work work from home stuff. And uh, also, it was Royal Rumble night, so we didn't want to miss oh, the Royal Rumble. Okay. Um, so we, as soon as the drawings were done, and first place was like given out or whatever. We, I mean, we, we, we bailed. See ya. Um, we, we, well, originally we were gonna bail after round two since there was two of us. Yeah. To get home to watch the Royal Rumble from the beginning, but we tested it out, pausing online and all this stuff, the event and. You know, rewatching from the beginning because Peacock, we I just never dealt with that. Anyways, um, so we ended up staying for round three, but we left in enough time where we had ten minutes to stop back by <laughs> Generation X, and I bought the items I didn't buy before really quick, and then we headed back home. We had our food, and then we had um, we watched some Royal Rumble and had a good time and hung out and everything. So. Overall, a good event. Um, during the event, I guess I should, I'm saying everything out of order here. <laughs> uh, round one, I played uh, of the other Scott. Um, he had a Shambling Undead. And um, I was fortunate enough to win this game two to nothing. Nice. With, with my Wood Elves. Second game, I played uh, John Spurgeon. And we, <laughs> this game, if you're. A lover of Blood Bowl, it's one of those games you would hate. Uh, I, I go up one to nothing on him. On the last play of the second half, he either throws it or hands off to a black orc who catches it and then dodges away for the, t- and, and, I, and I think gets the go for it for a touchdown, which is not like impossible because it's only like a 50 50 roll, but yeah. You still think like of all the people, the black orc to score. And so it was one-to-one going into halftime with John getting the ball and John did everything right. He was smart not to score on me. Uh, I was down to like, I think five players and I was, was, I had to just jump into the cage and throw two dice uphill to see what happens on the very last one. It worked. I got the right, (laughs) I got the best bounce for me and the worst possible bounce for John, even though it's still in like two tackle zones. I squirted a guy out so I could have a guy to pass to in case I picked up the ball in traffic. I sent a lineman down, picked up the ball in traffic, dodged away, did my go for it, threw the ball downfield. I did not catch it, but the ball was way down the field and almost impossible for John with the plays left um i eventually did get the ball and john's uh one guy that could maybe try to tackle my guy or you know hurt him he went over and he ran the troll over there to throw up on him because the block dodge and um it didn't work didn't break my armor so then i (laughs) dodged away scored a touchdown and won two to one and it was it was total elf bs because I literally had like five guys in the field. Well, that's all and you need sometimes. All eleven of John's guys, and that, well, that was what Drew was talking the whole time. Because I was just like, maybe I should drop a guy to get a re-roll and this and that. And he's like, just get your players, do this because elves can at least still score with five or six people on the field. And it came to fruition a few times in this tournament. Last game I played, uh, Bacchusine, or Colin Murphy who just for the rest of my life is just going to smash me in my face every time at a tournament. Uh, He's a good player. So, I mean, you're not alone there. No, I know that. Um, (laughs) It was what else versus vampires. Of course, you know, I was thinking like, if I hurt, hurt some of these guys, maybe it hurts him. I think Colin rolled two, you know, bites, bloodlust, the whole tournament. He had vampires. I think he had four or five re-rolls. 
And this is the moment where I've heard people say vampires are broken, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I haven't played vampires. At one point, Colin did what a good vampire coach does. I'm going to come hypnogaze this person, hypnogaze this person. And then he ran up and hypnogazed my ball carry, which I was like, that's kind of strange. No block. And then he went to tackle my guy and he rolled like double pals or something oh, either okay. way. And I was like, well, I at least have sidestep because I was trying to get close <laughs> to the sidelines nope. for the ball to throw out. And he goes, no, you don't have sidestep. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I hypnogazed you. I was like, what, 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 what? <laughs> he's like, oh yeah. Hypnogaze takes all your skills away. Sure does. All your skills away. Not your tackle zones, all your skills away. Yep. Um, Block, dodge, sidestep, fend, you know. Everything. Sure hands. Everything. Mm -hmm. So, of course he got the ball. He scored, if I remember correctly. He was beating the hell out of me, but I was like, I'm going to fight you as much as I can. At one point, it was one to nothing. I uphill blocked him, knocked his vampire down. I got the ball. I passed it to this guy on the other side of the field, and I just needed him to just fucking make a bad roll. Just make some pushes. No. He can never roll bad against <laughs> me. Cheater dice. So... He, of course, knocked me down, and he might have had to use a reroll. But when a vampire team has like four or five rerolls, it's just like, oh my gosh. Yep, exactly. Uh, eventually, eventually, I got beat two to nothing. So, and, and then you, you immediately know, he was in a position. Messaged me going, "What tier do we have vampires at at Oklahoma? It needs to be one, for sure." <laughs> um, I, I get that now. Well, actually talking to Colin, too, because he likes to talk about the game and yeah. stuff. He's like, yeah, these guys, people have them in the wrong tiers. They shouldn't be in this. And so, I, you know, he's he goes, you also play me every time I play with one of my top three teams, you know, so, that I'm really, really good at. And, of course, he's played, you know, 4,000 games on Fumble and all this stuff. So more games on Fumble than I have in my entire life anywhere. Anyways. It was always fun. It's still fun playing Colin, even though he smashes my face, because we I learned some things from a good player. I he really probably could have won this game three to nothing. He was trying to and he had to. He was behind on casualty yeah. chainsaws. So he was purposely kind of slow playing a little bit to try to get as many chainsaw kills as he could, which wasn't didn't work out for him in the long run because the other guy had more. So I get that. So why this score is, says only two to nothing, this is probably an easily three or four to nothing if the chainsaws wasn't matter. I did try to leap into cages and crap like that to try to knock the ball loose. I just didn't give up totally, but it really felt like I was just pissing in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds like he needs to sign in for Oklahoma and win there too. I mean, just saying. I think he's always going to be. I'm sure he's going to come up. Oh, I know. So, um, anyways, so he ended up getting second. So, still not a bad overall day. No, um, you know, I was looking back every time I've went to this event. I've I've went two and one or better. So, that's still pretty good. Like speaking if you're trying to be of, positive, I, was this also overall. was this also what's that? Was this also the weekend that you texted me like, hey? Look at this. And you showed me your win percentage on NEF compared to other people? Um, it's probably about a week after that. Okay. Guess. But Scott may be humble, but his winning percentage on NAF is now higher than a lot of people he didn't expect to be. I don't know if you want to name yeah, him or not. No, no, I don't. But there was <laughs> – it, it's – friends of friends or something like this. And it's people that actually go to an advice. And it was just, it, it really wasn't me trying to brag or anything. No, no. It was just it's like, exciting. And we've all played different amounts of tournaments. Yeah. And every one of these people I'd call friends, but I was just like noticing they have like a winning percentage and stuff on there. And I was like, Holy cow. And I didn't think it was right at first because I noticed this one person, mine was higher. And then this one person, mine was higher. And so I like looked up these other couple people and I was like, 
Steve, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> Out of all these people, who do you think has the highest winning percentage? And it was like, it's me. <laughs> so, and to add it's to just that, really weird. I don't think any of the people that you mentioned have done many fun tournaments, if that makes sense. Like, they're not going to take a fun team to just play and possibly lose. They're not going to take Chaos Dwarves with only Hobgoblins right. and a Minotaur because they want to relive the Hobgoblin team from the second edition fluff. Or that is correct. an Ogre team to Chaos Cup for, stunt, for casualties and lose every single game. Probably correct. So, so. with you doing that, you still have a better win percentage than these people. Not by that much, was, but well, yes. And, but and still, that still made deal. me happy. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times I think I'm not a good player. And so at this moment, I was like, oh, maybe maybe you are a more consistent player than you think. So, yeah. I, mean, I not, am not. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not upper echelon, but I really thought, like, you know, you shouldn't complain too much because there's probably – a good chunk of people who would like to have consistency that luckily I've had recently. Yeah. My, uh, my record is a 40.85, but my what? stunty win percentage is 5%. So <laughs> you, should, you should stop playing. Uh, I'll, I'll be playing stunty a lot this year. So that's either going to get much worse or is, is that what, are you looking at the win ratio thing? I'm looking at my sheet. So, for win ratio, though? Yeah. So it's not the same as their yeah. thing. Like, mine is 61.15. And I know a ton of people are going to come in and say, well, mine's, just, you know, 70. or And I get that. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, amongst some peers that I highly, highly respect and constantly do talk to about strategies and stuff like that, it, you know, it was just a little bit higher and I was just really shocked. So like I, I was really proud actually like that. I can hang with some of those guys. So see my on uh NEF, my win ratio is 48.45. So I'm not sure how they do their thing. Like mine without stunty on my own tracking sheet is 86 wins, 31 ties, 76 losses for a 44.56 percentage without stunty. Well, you don't listen to our advice when we give you advice, so... No, and I tend to play for fun instead of... I do not want to sit there and learn how to play a game that I just want to play for fun. I have now 12 teams marked off the uh, the 2020 list. You know how, like, you don't have... Oh, yeah. If you have an old ranking, so I'm slowly... I'm not doing it like the first 24 where I was like, I had to play a different team every time, mm -hmm. but I am trying to play what I feel is like a different team as much as I can going forward to try to fill in this little boxes. So I don't have these two lines in my stats. And for those people out there that go, why should I join the NAF for $5? These stats, sure. They don't mean nothing, but it's fun to look at. It really is yeah. fun to look at. I can look at these stats and go, well, dang, Steve's a way better dark elf coach than me. And then I can look at something else and go, Oh, but I'm a better halfway player than Steve. It's just fun, fun little stats. I, I wish they almost kind of kept casualties because I think it would be astonishing to see yeah. how many casualties I've gave up over the time period, but it is what it is. I just so. realized I have not played Black Orcs in a tournament. Yeah, or Imperial see, like, Nobility. Huh. Well, at all? You never played Black Orcs at all? No. Huh. Okay. Well, they came out, you know, after COVID oh, that's true. and haven't yeah, had yeah, much yeah. Ch chance to do much. I need to go through here and see what else I haven't played. Cause I haven't played black orc or Imperial nobility. I haven't played snotling, but I'm playing them next month. Um, I don't also, know what else is new. Okay. Before we move on, cause Sorry. I know we're kind of ranting Texas Chainsaw Massacre gave away a lot of items and stuff, which is really cool. Uh, for everybody participating, they did the raffles. That's another. A lot of money. See, that's a tournament that loses money too because I don't know how they they can't afford buying all that stuff. They have a lot of people who donate, which is what your community, yeah. you know, does. Um, 
I mean, Critter Bowl, I usually always lose money because I'm donating board games. Of course, like yeah. That as well. Um, Jason Rannick, the tournament went smooth from everything I remember. I don't remember any problems. The store was clean. All the bathrooms were clean every time, even though, like, there's a bunch of guys there. So a few times I snuck over to the girls' ladies' <laughs> restroom and used the restroom because I was about to pee my pants. Uh, the lunch break, I will say this. Since people like feedback, and I don't know if Jason listens, but I think I mentioned it to him, we had a short lunch, and then it became shorter. As we ordered our food, we heard that we had like 10 minutes. Um, At this point, my suggestion to Jason is, is if we can't get into the store earlier, which is fine, just give everybody a heads up, because we we could, me and Drew could have ate a big lunch at like 11, Mm-hmm. And then brought like an extra some type of snacky thing or something like that to get us through the three rounds, because trying to gobble down your water burger in less than ten minutes, yeah, is not enjoyable. And I watched Drew eat about half his hamburger, <laughs> a few French fries, and then he just pitched the rest because we just we honestly didn't have time. Um, just to keep everything going on time. And it's nothing against Jason. I know sometimes the stores have restrictions, Mm -hmm. but just if you give everybody a heads up, I think nobody will mind just keep rolling with the tournament. Because if I pull out a granola bar or, uh, you know, I bought an extra hamburger at Sonic when, or water burger at lunch and I just kept it in my bag and I, you know, I ate it two hours (laughs) later. I could breakfast, burrito at chaos cup i mean i did that right yeah <laughs> i know if it works but it works anyway, anyways that that is my really like only issue is just like i would have been fine if i would have known i just would have been prepared for it yeah. and the store has snacks and some sodas so so just just eliminate the lunch i think and just keep it rolling which is good anyway so um other than that, I don't think I have anything else. It was nice to see everybody and chat with people and stuff like that. I miss getting to see everybody. But it was okay. cool to see people go like, oh, so you're Scott Prime. <laughs> I still find that really weird, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so. It's You know, the opposite thing is weird, too. Like, this league that's starting up at this game store here, they're all very new. Like, very, very new to the game. So I show up, and they're like, trying to explain stuff to me and i'm like yeah yeah no i know i know or like buying if you know someone mentioned he had some old figures and he starts telling me about well these are from like second edition they're kind of rare to find i go yeah i'm i'm aware you know (laughs) i'm trying not to be like that douche of come on guys i've been running tournaments for 12 years and i have a podcast that a thousand people listen to so i think i know what i'm doing so come on (laughs) it's okay they're excited oh absolutely I know. I try to remind myself when I'm talking to like new people in the league and stuff. I'm like, I'm about to say a bunch of stuff. If you already know this, mm-hmm. just let me know. I try to do um, that too. Well, when someone's like, I'm new. Okay. Are you new and you want to learn stuff on your own? Or are you new and open to ideas or suggestions? Oh, no. I love it if you have feedback. Okay. Well, we're going to start here. Do not line up this way. This is dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to smash your face in. Yes. So for sure. Um, I think that's all I have though. So like it was okay. a fun little getaway to go to, down to Texas. Uh, Friday night we played uh, some board games with Drew, which is always fun. So yeah. We had a good time. And then of course I had to come back and do life stuff. So Get back to the real world. Yeah. 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 So right. that's all I have. Well, we shall return and discuss our idea of what the best spinoff game of Blood Bowl is. Is Crunch going to win? I think Crunch is going to win. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, as we said, we're going to discuss the best spinoff game. It's going to be very subjective. We have not compared notes or anything. So... Is this the best spinoff game of Blood Bowl? Anything yes. qualifies. Blitz Bowl, Gun so, Bowl, yes. I'm thinking, Sevens. Lem- tell, me if this is not an incom- tell me if this is incomplete. We've got Dungeon Bowl. We have Crunch. 
It is a spinoff game. Sure. Sevens, Gutter Bowl, Blitz Bowl, Blood Bowl Team Manager. There's also, if we wanted to include it, although I don't think either one of us has played it, really, Street Bowl, uh, Beach Bowl, Ice Bowl, uh, Bowl, Death Bowl, Elf Bowl, whatever. Like, is there anything else I'm missing? So we're looking at variants that are Blood Bowl themed. Yeah. Okay. And not not video games. I did not include any of the video games because aside from the video game crunch, everything is pretty much a take off of the regular game. Even the Dungeon okay. Bowl back in the day. Um, and I don't think that that Star Manager game never came out, did it? For the phone? I don't know. There was, was a coach crap. manager game that I was part of the beta for, and it was horrible. I no, don't think it probably, ever came out. Probably not. Okay. Then, yeah, the, these are all versions of the game tabletop. Which one do we think is best? Either whatever criteria you want. You know, I have my thought. What's yours? You want me to go first? Yeah, let's have yours first. Unless you okay. want me to go first. Uh, and you give me some time gonna, to think. I'm going to go... I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to say a Blood Bowl variant. My favorite Blood Bowl variant still right now is Gutter Bowl. Okay. It, to me, it fits in the fluff of every little boy watches the NFL or college football, and mm-hmm. then they, used, at least used to, probably not now, they would go out in the streets and have their Nerf ball or their football they got for Christmas, and they would play football, right? Whether it's tackle still or two-touch or whatever, and you fantasize about that. So the idea that Gutter Bowl is the old men, and I think about the... I mean, I did this when I was like 19 and 20. We, we met up at the old high school field. Some of us guys... And we were still young at the time, but probably still not a good idea to, like, when you don't have insurance, play full tackle at 20 years old with no (laughs) pads on. But we did that, right? We did that several times and walked off with injuries. And that's what Gutter Bowl reminds me of is, you know, the idea that people are in the bar watching the game and then they start mouthing off and they go outside and they can do wonderfully well. Or they could just walk and hurt themselves, which is welcome (laughs) to my life. Yeah. Some days I get up and I think I was in a car wreck the last night. And other days, it's, everything's perfectly great. <laughs> um, that is my favorite variant. As to board games, I feel like we really only have, like, I guess Blood Bowl is a board game. Yeah, but it is. But I never think of it that way because it's, like, a campaign miniature game to me type thing. But I consider Blitz Bowl a great board game based on the blood bowl theme mm-hmm. i also think blood bowl team manager is a, also a great <laughs> game i like if you told me we had to play one of those i would pick blood bowl team manager yeah. it has been several years and i don't remember the rules or anything but at chaos cup i observed brian too and uh, michael lewis and a few other guys playing it while I was playing Gutter Bowl, and I really missed it. I missed seeing the cards. Mm-hmm. Again, it is a board, 100% board game with the theme of Blood Bowl on top of it. And you can get that kind of feel and fun and still roll some dice, and whoever has the most points wins. It is a board game. I would pick Blood Bowl Team Manager. I wish... From what my memories of it was, the teams that came in the box were fine playing against each other. Yeah. But the teams in the expansions felt like they were just a little bit better than everybody that came in the original box. That is true. So when we did try to play it, we tried to play with everybody take a team in the box or everybody take a team outside the box. Uh, I wish it had like one or two more expansions, but I wish that for a lot of games that I enjoy and wish I had more factions and stuff for forbidden stars is one of those. I wish there was more, a couple more factions that never got made by fantasy flight. I'm sure blood bowl team manager just didn't sell as well. And it got two 
it got two expansions more than I thought it was going to get. So that's, that's true. the good news. Yeah. Um, um, realistically, so you, that, you stole my thoughts. That's my answers. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to say kind of similar. So the reason I had this idea is I finally got the Blood Bowl, Blitz Bowl Ultimate Edition. So we could theoretically review that if we ever wanted to. Even though it's like been out two years or whatever, um, I think the best spin-off is probably Blitz Bowl because I haven't played Gutter Bowl that much, but I love the concept of Blitz Bowl to where you're trying out and you're growing, and I think honestly that could be made into a really really fun game with a little bit of tweaking. Like, it's already really good, but I, I want a campaign mode that actually is good. The camp campaign mode they added to it, haven't checked the new one yet, but the other one wasn't a big fan. Um, but it's just really cool, the little change of the rules and stuff. I like it, but I'm with you right there. Blood Bowl Team Manager, number one by far. It, it has all the fluff. It has great art. Art so good they've been using it primarily since then for everything. Um, and it just has that feeling of you're a coach playing Blood Bowl. So yeah. that would be my guess or my choice. I luckily enough have the expansions. I have them all put into one box that I made. So it's a great game. You are right. The newer teams do seem to come up with uh, a little bit better players and stuff. But, yeah, just that game. If you haven't played it, if you can track it down, it is expensive. Especially with the expansions, it's even more expensive. But you can still find them at game stores just randomly because they didn't sell great. Uh, if you're able to find one, buy it. Absolutely. You'll be happy you did but it's just such a fun game and you're right I haven't played in years but it just played so well fantasy flight the rules make zero sense at all could not understand it from the rules but once you start playing it makes perfect sense and you could show someone how to play it in five minutes and if anybody out there doesn't know what we're talking about go look up an old episode we have the game designer on here I can't remember his name but he was on one of the early podcasts, probably within the first couple of years of our podcast. We Back when we used episode. to interview people. <laughs> Correct. Man, damn um, I forgot. Um, Genghis Khan, which is apparently a tournament or a convention they do here in Denver, was, I think, this past weekend. Not this one, but like the last one. Matt Forbeck was there. And I was going see? to go... Uh, like try to find a copy of a book and get him to sign it for giveaways. But I, I totally forgot about it until afterwards. So I'm like, dang it. But yeah, uh, yeah it happens. But yes, we did at one point have the game designer for blood bowl team manager on this very podcast. We chatted to him. He was very open and it was a good time. Good mm -hmm. time. Um, you're right about Blitz Bowl. The theme of that, once you accept that it's not blood bowl light, mm -hmm. that it's just tryouts because you're like, why did I get points for marking <laughs> two people? Exactly. That's stupid. If you, you have to go into the mentality of it's a board game that has a blood bowl theme mm -hmm. and these are tryouts. They don't care who quote wins the, they care what the stars look like. It's you want your fundamentals to be good. You want to show off for your coach. It's like, yeah, go, you know, tie up those two people. Did it awesome yes because you you can win the game without scoring touchdowns yeah i mean so that that's very feasible so just if you have to accept that but it is good too it's not good enough for to get to the tables often and really like i said i'm always going to pick team manager if you give me a choice between those two well that's the hardest thing about any of these games really is do we want to play these over playing blood bowl now Typically, no, because we play enough Blood Bowl that we'd rather just play that. But yeah, it's fun. And that's the thing, too. Like I said, with Blitz Bowl, 
if you put a little bit of work into it and made a nice um, system to build it up so like your players could then be drafted for your regular Blood Bowl season, you do a off season of Blitz Bowl where the players level up and then you could draft them skilled into your season, that could add a whole nother level of awesomeness to it. But just you have to add more work to it. For sure. Um, so no crunch then, huh? Crunch is really terrible. <laughs> I Someone was mentioning that on Facebook. And I was like, you should go listen to our episode about how we talked about it. I think that was, a what did I say, it was 10 years ago almost? This month? I mean, at, at this point, it feels like three years ago, everything. But it's, yeah, yeah. it's probably been 10 years ago now. So. Yeah, when uh had the whole special episode of you teaching Alan how to play, and we just recorded it. Yeah. It's just it's like... Probably, I'm sure it's aged well. <laughs> I'm sure it's pretty terrible. Um, it was terrible at the time, but it's hilarious. <laughs> if you like that episode, you love that episode, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, if, it, if you didn't, you just didn't listen to it. That's fine, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's all I got on those. I mean, yeah, I, that's kind of what I expected to happen. I was wondering if Gutter Bowl was going to make its way into the top, which it did. So that's good. I mean, I I cheated and gave you two answers. You gave um, me three answers, two of which were mine. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Three? I gave you three? He said gutter bowl, and then you started talking about blitz bowl, and then you said team manager. Well. Which is yeah. fine. And, I, and I, I, can't, I feel like I can't just narrow it down to one of those. On the board game side, which I consider blitz bowl and team manager, mm-hmm. team manager is number one. I think so, but too. But the other ones, to me, are all blood bowl variants. Yeah. So that's why I have to say it's a blood bowl variant. That's Gutter fair. Bowl is number one. Okay. Well, um, and 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 really, before I played Gutter Bowl, I would have said, "Why did they even make this?" <laughs> and it's actually kind of fun once you accept the fluff of it all. Mm-hmm. But but Mighty Blow rules in that for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I can, can imagine hurt people even more. So, hey, well, no love for sevens. Well, I mean, it's okay. But it's, I still don't get the love affair with sevens with everybody. And that's okay. Everybody's going to say, well, it plays quick. It does this. It's like, so it's gutter bowl. Yep, exactly. So. Okay. Well, so that's it for that. Uh, we'll come back with some shout outs. Episode 160 is coming to an end. And as it does, we go back to the shout outs wasn't high-pitched, but it was annoying, so it counts. I tried to, like, yell it since I had no kids here. That's nice. And I backed away from the mic. You did. Thank you. Because you'd get mad if I yelled shout-outs right this close. Oh, God, yes. I would, want to do that right now. You but... would destroy the microphone. Yeah. Well... Maybe not. A pretty good microphone. Anyways, any shout-outs for you? Um. Yeah, let's do some... First, I want to thank Jason Campbell for running Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I kind of like these events down in Dallas <laughs> where I can I have a friend right now I can stay with and uh, then just travel for the tournament for like one weekend without costing me an arm and a leg. Yeah. So if more Dallas people would like to run tournaments, you know, that would be great. That's the nice thing here. Um, Colorado Springs is only a couple hours away, so... Go down I there. would like to give a shout out to our buddy Dave Hanrath, who currently is running, I believe he's running the Blood Bonnet Bowl down in Houston as we speak. It is his birthday weekend. Happy birthday, Dave. Happy and, birthday, Dave. I did uh, not realize. Yeah. Facebook did not know tell if me. It's even on his Facebook or not. Uh, Face Stomp is his name on everywhere. He, he's a good Blood Bowl player, he's a good dude. How many people do they have down all, there? They had 46 people is what it looks like, according to the notes I saw. Okay. I saw 23 matchups. So I'm also shouting out to the Houston-Austin <laughs> crew 
that I know sometimes think there's no Blood Bowl being played norther, north of them. <laughs> but there is a tournament coming up in Oklahoma Bowl weekend that we would love to have you guys come on up. and Please sign up. You can get out of your state for a weekend. I know that's kind of weird. It'll be awesome. And, uh, you can get you back. You can go through Dallas on your way back and see the eclipse. Yeah. Or, Oklahoma and weekend, April 6th and 7th. I don't think there's rollouts of electricity going on here in Oklahoma that I know of. So no. you can avoid that as well. Uh, we do have, as I said, almost 34 people, 35 people signed up for Oklahoma weekend. If you're coming, please sign up. The earlier, the better. Um, please come. We always need more people. Yeah. Always yeah, enjoy we'll it. Look, we're about six weeks away from that. It would be helpful because the store's already starting to ask me like how many spots we need to reserve because yeah. I guess there's something coming up that they, they'll they run an event if we're not filling the house. So We uh, better fill the house. So let's fill the house so we don't have to deal with other gamers and be stingy for the weekend. Yeah. I felt like I had another shout out. Oh, I don't have a shout out, but I do have a message. Um, the first ever Kansas City Carnage event had gave away fields for everybody who participated. Oh, the GW one? Uh, the GW printed fields, the neoprene fields. Me and Gary have a set. And, um, we would actually really like to get these into a good home. We know that they're very limited. We don't know what we're at. We don't know what's really fair for this price, but we're trying to get like 450 or so plus shipping. So if you are interested, you guys have first dibs if you're listening to this and before I post them elsewhere. For people who are unaware, these are pitches made by GW directly. So their official GW Blood Bowl related items for yep. the GW tournament there in Kansas City. Um, at most, I want to say there is fifteen of each because they probably. had four different designs. So right. legitimately, this is probably the most limited GW official Blood Bowl item ever made, in yeah, my I estimation. Have a fe- I have a feeling if I sell these one day, I'm going to find out they're going to be like three times the amount because of the rarity of them. They do have Kansas City Carnage printed on them, and this is from the very first uh, GP or whatever it was called. Yeah, uh, GW Open. GW Open for Blood Bowl. So Mm -hmm. these probably are super collector items to somebody. Um, We've gone back and forth. Uh, Gary's ready to sell, and he owns half of them, so... We figured it's just better to sell as a group in one function. And we're trying to go up to uh, the Planet Comic Con here in a few weeks. So having some extra cash would probably be a good thing anyways right now. So if you're really interested, message the Boat Down podcast. I'd rather get into like some Blood Bowl, loyal Blood Bowl fans before they go somewhere else or whatever. So Fair enough. Um, shout out to Brian, too, running... Rocky Mountain Rampage, April 27th, which I will be going to. So very excited to get out to there. Nice. To see You're it. finally getting to an event we've talked about for years to go to. I know. Brian has been extremely faithful and come to, I think, every Oklahoma except one, maybe. I think there was one Probably. he missed. Um, great friend. Finally getting to go up to his tournament. Hope to have a great time. I'm sure he will. The rules are very interesting because you can buy stat increases and it's blowing my mind because I'm like, I could take ball and chain and give them plus two movement. Kind of tempting. Hmm. But that should be a lot of fun. I already got my plane tickets and everything ready. So Uh, also big shout out to Tim Pollard. You might have seen us share the fundraiser for Pete Nifton getting a mobile scooter or motorized scooter. Pete, friend of the podcast, personal friend of both of ours, Blood Bowl God when it comes to art and second edition, and probably one of the primary reasons that not only we do this podcast, but the podcast then influences us to do tournaments, which influences other people to do tournaments, which 
gives us the current state of Blood Bowl. So who knows how much impact we have towards that. But all that comes from Pete, because that was one of the main things that drew us in. This and, is, if you read comics and you've heard of Stanley and Jack Kirby, and some people say, well, Stan wrote the words, but Jack created the word, the characters in the universe visually, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe even led to a lot of the stories and stuff. I don't know Jervis Johnson personally at any level, and I'm very grateful for his game and his vision. Yeah. Um, but I also know that, like, Pete took it also kind of in his own way. You know, like, he says, I know nothing about sports. I, I bought magazines to try to get the feel of American football. And watch Monday and, Night Football, and, basically. And and his version is, is like American football meets Looney Tunes. It could be crazy, chaotic, and serious at the same time. So I feel like Jervis is the Stan Lee while – while Pete is the Jack Kirby or the, the universe and world creator through his artwork, because it influenced so many things. And I really think the vision of what blood bowl should be from second edition on. Yeah. And that is why Pete got hired when the, the new spikes came out and they did cartoons and stuff and images. He got hired to do some of that stuff because they also know how important he is to that. And um, when Pete stopped doing those, they went out and got Kristen Schwager. I'm saying his name right. Yeah. Schwager, whose art is very similar. They're different, but it is similar in styles of Pete. So they, I'm and just telling Pedro you. Pedro Ramos, I feel, who is, you know, second coming of Pete in many ways. That's why we love his stuff so much. 100%. Um, you know, it's funny because. I didn't know Pete Nifton's name was Pete Nifton for several, several years. I, probably almost mid-90s type deal. It was always that guy who does the art. I, yeah. I remember Robert one day telling me, like, oh, that's a Pete Nifton art. And I'm like, who? <laughs> He's like, the PK is right here. And I'm like, how did I never see all that stuff, you know? Anyways, I mean, so, like, very, very influential. And I'm glad that Tim did this to get Pete mobile. Yeah, and, Pete's getting older. Pete's got issues walking realistically pete's got issues falling and he's been doing too much of that so uh, he finally admits that he needs assistance and assistance came through pollard put up the fundraiser initially it was for i think a thousand pounds or something and we blew past that in a day or so uh, eventually mm -hmm. realized that to get a decent motorized scooter you need a lot more because they didn't know how much they'd get you know they just wanted something and when they got to the point of something, it was like, oh, well, let's get something good. So upped it to 2,500 pounds and smashed that, too. I mean, that's, within a week. And that's what so. I'm talking about. The Blood Bowl community is really, really, really great. Yeah. So I appreciate y'all doing that. Everybody who donated out there or even the people who really looked at their finances and like, damn, I feel bad because I want to donate, but I just physically can't. If you can't, you can't. I still have hats off to you because you at least thought about it so we donated so i'll put that out there yeah. um shout out again to drew because it's all public i don't want to just put him on blast but he was the top donator so it was awesome yeah. of him to step up you know uh, it's funny is uh drew wanted to get extra tickets at the chainsaw massacre to donate and you know because drew's a really giving person yeah even, even though he acts like an old, grumpy, curmudgeon. And if you played against Drew, you might sometimes think that. But um, <laughs> he said, we, we walked in after putting our stuff in, and we were like, he's, he's like, all right, we're doing the drawing. And I was like, well, Drew wanted to buy some more tickets. And Jason's like, because he was stressed and everything. And he said, like, oh, but we already, we already said that was last call. And Drew's like, that's fine. Just draw it. I'm still going to donate some money. And so he won. And he still went over there, and I'm not even going to say the amount, but it was not, it wasn't just $20. Let's put it that way. He still donated all this money after the drawing happened. So, you know, like he didn't have to. He already he even won the prize. He just could have went, Meh. Drew's nice. He's a very, very nice person. So. so, yes, he's very caring, and, you know, he's blessed that he can do that. So, yeah. Anyways, um, 
I guess the final shout out I have right now is for Grebo. They have sent us stuff for Oklahoma for giveaways. We have some other people who are also supposed to be sending stuff, but we haven't received it yet, so we'll shout them out when we do. Scott should be at some point taking photos of the Grebo stuff so we can post about it. Oh, okay. But, yeah, you know, eventually. I can do that. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that's it we got for now. Anything else? I. I feel like my life is constantly running way more than when the kids are even like little because like yeah, even course. making this time, we're now almost an hour after the proposed time for me to go do other stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah. So you're just going to have to stay on me on stuff like pictures I know. and it's fine. Junk like that. So. All right. Well, uh, last thing I'll say is sign up for Oklahoma weekend, please. If you're coming, please, please, please. Yeah. If you're coming. Even if you're not coming, if you want the stuff, if you want to be the first 50 to get special stuff, because oh, we have other true. stuff going on. I mean, I sign up for Gas Cup every year, so even when I don't go, so. You only didn't go one year, didn't wasn't it? Probably, but still. <laughs> still, how yeah. many How many of those years, though, did I sign up going, <laughs> every, I'm probably not coming. <laughs> like five, but still. <laughs> Okay, well, we will see you guys next month. Most likely going to be talking about Oklahoma Primer. We'll see you then. If you'd like to email Both Down, the email address is bothdownpodcasts at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or at facebook.com forward slash bothdown. And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Blood Bowl Team Manager. Woo! Football. Football, where you can tackle the referee. Kill the referee. Well, that doesn't sound very fun. Well, in a video game or a, a, a board game, lots of fun. And a lot of people like Blood Bowl. It's a very popular game. This is not Blood Bowl. This is Blood Bowl Team Manager. I've been looking forward to this game for a while. I was very curious to see what it was like. Initially, I thought it was a deck-building game where you draft players for your team. Well, you do draft players occasionally in this game, but it's kind of like a complicated take-that game. Does that make it bad? Let's look at it, and I'll tell you. <laughs>